there's one very important nutrient that prevents a lot of health problems. It's vitamin K2. If you have calcium in your arteries, vitamin K2's job is to remove it, but you have other soft tissues as well. So this is the hip joint. Vitamin K2 tells the joints to release the soft tissue, whether it's arthritis, calcium deposits, it tells it to be released into the blood. The other function of vitamin K2 is to make sure calcium goes from that blood into the bone and it binds very tightly to your bones and your teeth. So when you don't have enough of this vitamin K2, you get a lot of soft tissue calcification and you also get a lot of bone corrosion like osteoporosis as well as cavities. And the reason why we have vitamin K2 is because it's very, very dangerous to have too much calcium in the soft tissues. We're supposed to have it directed into the bone and your teeth, but it's not normal to have it in other places. So our body has this whole mechanism of keeping it in the right place. And so the question is, where does vitamin K2 come from? It can either come from our foods or it can be converted by certain microbes in our gut from another vitamin called vitamin K1. And vitamin K1 comes from leafy greens. And so of course, if you're not eating a lot of leafy greens, you're probably not getting enough K1. So the next question is, what type of foods are very high in this vitamin K2? One is called natto. That's fermented soybeans. This is something they consume in Japan, maybe areas of China. Natto has the most vitamin K2. A lot of people take it if they have a heart problem and they're at risk for a stroke. And what's interesting is that here we have this uh, natto. It's very high in K2, but it also seems to counter the effects of vitamin K1. The next highest uh, food with vitamin K2 is goose liver. It's also high in chicken liver, beef liver. I cannot consume liver. I do have uh, cod liver, but other types of liver I can't consume because I just don't like it. Next food it's in, eel. When's the last time you had some eel? Probably never. So those are the foods that have the most vitamin K2, okay? There's a lot of other ones I'm gonna get to, but what's interesting about this is that a lot of people are deficient in vitamin K2 because they don't eat certain foods that are high in K2. However, you may have eaten these foods which do have some vitamin K2, butter, cheese, primarily from grass-fed animals, salami, there's a small amount in pork chops, and there's also some in fermented vegetables as in raw sauerkraut. Now what's really ironic is that here we have this vitamin that has the potential to keep our arteries completely clean of calcium, yet it's in the fatty foods, which we've been told to stay away from. So it's really ironic that we're told not to consume the very food that has the antidote to a really big problem that people have. Also as a side note, vitamin K2 is a fat soluble vitamin. If you don't have a gallbladder, if you have a bad liver, you might not have the bile to help you absorb vitamin K2. Now, I mentioned another way to get vitamin K2 from K1 but only if you have the microbes that are needed to make that conversion. There's a microbe called B. subtilis. This is the main microbe that helps you convert K1 to K2. Unfortunately, this microbe is very easily destroyed when you consume broad spectrum antibiotics. Only like 30% of the population have this microbe in their gut. And so if you don't have the microbe and you're not eating the foods with vitamin K2, you're more at risk for developing this calcification in your soft tissues. But you need to know there are certain things that really destroy the gut's ability to make vitamin K2. That's antibiotics, steroids as in prednisone, PPIs or antacids, consuming GMO foods because the glyphosate acts as an antibiotic, alcohol, junk food, eating a lot of sugar, blood thinners, liver disease, and also being on a low fat diet. As I said before, vitamin K2 is in fatty foods. Now, one of the toxic effects of way, way too much vitamin D is too much calcium in the arteries. The toxicity effect from vitamin D causing too much calcium in the blood is so rare. You would have to take hundreds of thousands of vitamin D3 for months for that to occur. But guess what? Vitamin K2 can come to the rescue and help keep that calcium on the low side. Vitamin K2 is dependent on another nutrient and this nutrient is magnesium. So if you don't have enough magnesium, vitamin K2 won't work. So think about this. If you have kidney stones or arthritis or you have calcium in your arteries, and you're even taking vitamin K2, but it's not working. It could be you're just low in magnesium. And a lot of people are low in magnesium, 
And it's very difficult to test for it because most of the magnesium is inside the cell, not inside your blood. Only 1% is in your blood. So unless you do a biopsy or some sophisticated test, you're not gonna be able to determine your true levels. So when we're talking about calcium being in the wrong place, whether it's in the soft tissue or wherever, magnesium and vitamin K2 together are a great combo solution to solve those problems. If you're taking vitamin K2, you have to realize there's two different kinds. There's the form that's called the MK4, okay? And then you also have MK7. It's natural, whereas the MK4 is made synthetically. I usually recommend using the MK7 version. And I would also recommend taking 100 micrograms for every 10,000 I use of vitamin D3. That would be the ratio. So if you're doing 20,000 I use of vitamin D3, you would take 200 micrograms of vitamin K2, the MK7 form. So I really wanted to put this vitamin K2 on your radar in your awareness so you can make sure that you consume the foods high in vitamin K2. And because vitamin K2 is usually associated with vitamin D, if you haven't seen this video, you should check it out. I put it up right here.